JP Morgan Chase, maybe you've heard of it. If it was a country, it would have the eighth largest economy in the world. Bigger than Brazil, bigger than Canada, bigger than Russia. Hi, I'm Justin Johnson from Attapuggas, Georgia. And I've always wondered, how did banks become too big to fail? The five biggest banks in the U.S. hold almost half the assets of the country's entire banking industry, more than $7 trillion. So how did we get these giants? Because it wasn't always this way. I paid a visit to Frederick Mishkin. He's a professor of banking and financial institutions at Columbia Business School. He literally wrote the book on banking and finance. Literally, he wrote like five textbooks. Well over a million students have used the book. Yeah, I have. I'm one of them. Oh, good. In the 20s, we had 30,000 banks in the U.S. By the 70s and 80s, we had about 15,000. And today, we have about 5,000. Now, nobody's saying that we lived in a bank utopia back then, okay? We had a lot of banks, yes, but they actually, they kind of sucked. Even though there were all these thousands of banks, they weren't actually competing against each other. They weren't allowed to. State laws said you could only operate in one state at a time. Some states had laws saying you could only have one branch in the whole state. Why did they have these laws? Because banks had lobbied for them. This actually was a way for banks to not be as competitive. And when you're not as competitive, you actually can basically not give the consumer as good a deal. And particularly if you're a bank in one state, you don't want to have people from other states come in and take away some of your business. So you'll fight like hell to keep them out. So what changed? Well, over the 70s and 80s, the argument that consumers would benefit from more competition between banks started to gain traction. And it became clear that having too many local banks was risky. Local banks depend on local economies, and local economies fail. Texas, for example, in the 80s was dependent on oil. When the price of oil fell, the economy there suffered, and hundreds of banks went under. Then in the 90s, the federal government stepped in and said, yeah, we're going to allow interstate banking. We're going to allow one bank to buy up another bank. We're going to allow one bank to operate in more than one state. And that's what they did. We'd like the government to always act in our interests. But frequently, if there's very powerful businesses, they can actually get the, the uh, government to do, to do their bidding. And in this case, sometimes with strict competition. So as these banks are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, we start hearing the phrase, too big to fail. It doesn't mean that they're actually like too big to actually fail. They can totally fail. The problem is that if they do, it would be a catastrophic disaster. And it was. If you let them go under, you have a crisis. On the other hand, if you uh, uh, always are going to rescue them, that it makes it more likely to take, take risks that can create a crisis. And if everyone knows that the government will step in if something goes wrong, then people are less likely to pay attention to what that institution is doing. So the result is that you need to think about uh, uh, deciding either not to bail them out at all, which I think we realize is probably going to be problematic, particularly after Lehman Brothers, or alternatively, yes, there is this bailout that we're going to, going to do in the future, but we know then that we actually have to go and regulate them, go in and check their books to make sure that they're taking on less risk. So how did banks get too big to fail? Well, we started with banks that were too small to not be terrible. They were isolated and not very competitive. So we let them compete. We allowed them to merge with other financial institutions, and they did. Every time there was a crisis or a bank failed, another bank gobbled it up. They got bigger and bigger and bigger. And so here we are, with banks as big as countries and getting larger all the time. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and let us know what you've always wondered in the comments below.